Today I'm going to show you how to paint this really cool chipped background. You're not going to want to miss a second of it. Okay, let's get started. We're going to make some fake wood grain today. I'm going to use Cypress. This is Minwax's water-based stain. And Cypress, and the number is 1866. And it's really interesting to me. Both of these are browns, but both of them read really green. And my stir sticks, which I highly recommend getting and making, um, show that they're both definitely brown. So just an interesting, don't judge the color by its color. Okay, so we know we'll need quite a bit to get this whole board covered. We're gonna use the three inch wide foam brush available on studior12.com. Okay, we'll just get that nice wood color. Look at how that just changes from green to brown. That's just crazy. MDF is a wonderful material these days. They've made all the improvements in the universe. They used to be kind of unsafe to paint on because if you sanded it and you breathed it, there was stuff you didn't want. Um, nowadays, they've made it all super green. So it's actually really safe to, to paint with. These are the foam brushes that we like for their, um, their rigidity, if you will. They don't cave over. The cheap ones from like the dollar store and stuff like that tend to be ones that just flop and you can't get any pressure to apply paint. Like I'm actually using a bit of pressure to push the paint onto the wood and um, you can't do that with a floppy foam brush. So today we're gonna play background and we're gonna do faux wood and we're going to do a totally chipping, peeling paint technique. You are going to have fun. This is gonna go in my water bucket and I want that to stay submerged. So I need to wedge it in there. Sometimes they like to float. So if you need to just shove some brushes on top of it to keep it submerged. We spend a lot of time submerging things. Okay, let me dry this and we'll get started with our fun technique. Now we have Legacy Brown and I do have that number 1056 and that's the Minwax water-based. Um, they're expensive, but they come in a quart size and a little dab will do you. You don't need a whole lot. Um, my recommendation is to find some painting friends that are interested in having the same material and splitting the can um, by some of these honey bottles and then split the can by three or four people. Um, they're about $15 each, 12 to, 12 to 16 is the approximate. Okay, now we're gonna do some wood grain. There's a couple of tools that you can use. You can use just a simple serrated tool and just pull it through your paint as you apply it. You can use the rocker to get a grain. I think for today's benefit, I think we're just gonna use, this one's the evenly spaced teeth. This has, um, teeth that graduate, so um, not the same width, but I think this is what I need today. And so what we do is we work kind of quickly. We're going to get another foam brush out. And we're gonna put this color over that color. And you wanna work in quick movements and then you're just going to stripe it down along and that will make you have a wood effect. And then I'm gonna sand as well. So we'll do a couple of things and then we're gonna cover it all with chippy paint. So let's do that whole top. I got that first piece of paint on the cleaned off table, no. Okay, and so I think we were on this guy. And you can see it doesn't matter if we have warbles. You can go back over it. Just getting an effect. And when you get to the meeting places, you can flip them off just a little bit, just to blend. Okay. 
And if you wanted to, you could give it just a little bit of movement or you could keep it straight. So MDF is really nice to work with, but it's very plain. So if you want it to look like wood, you have to kind of manipulate it just a little bit. Okay, and then anywhere where you have these straight across lines, go cut those in. Okay, now we'll let that dry. I'm gonna go to the sink and get this washed so that um, it doesn't get stuck in the teeth and make it no good. So we are dry, I'm a little bit tacky, but um, I think it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna use my 60 grit sanding block. Um, these are amazing, you guys, um, for non, just getting tired while you're painting. These allow you to get even pressure. It allows you to push into it. It's comfortable to hold and guide. These are amazing. Um, we can put an Amazon link below for you. So we're gonna just sand this to give it a little bit more rustic look. my crumbles on the floor. If you're doing this in a house that has carpet, um, keep a big trash can by you and then just brush things off into the trash can. Yeah, that's giving me the look. So see how that just rustifies, rustic ups, rusticify? I don't know. So um, there's a saying that we have that we put on the back of our cups, um, sanding is my cardio. Well, I thought I was going to want another color over this to soften it because that got just a little bit dark for me, but I think if I do a little bit more sanding, I think it's gonna be perfect. Okay, we're gonna call that good. Next, we are gonna see where the letters, we're gonna use this big joyful and we're gonna just pick out the joy of the joyful. But what's neat is I know that my stencil will fit with three letters on it, so I know that I can put a joy, I can put my letters where I need to. So what I'm gonna do, so we're gonna measure halfway, get out our triple threat ghost rider, which has a white ceramic lead that erases with water or eraser. So we wanna mark halfway. And so we are at 11 inches, so five and a half. Okay, so I know where my center is now. And then what I wanna do is just lay this. What I need is a marking place for where my letters are gonna go. So now I'll know where my letters go. And can I tell what that looks like? Yes. Okay, got it. So now we're gonna apply some wax. I love using the Clapham Salable Wax. Um, this is available on our website. Um, this is an international product actually, but it is a very quality, is made with just beeswax. So it is food safe. Um, you can use this on products like say you're refinishing a high chair or some children's toys or something like that, you can use this as the final finish because kids put things in their mouth, their food goes on it, that kind of thing. So you can use this for that. But I love it because it's soft. Um, it's super malleable. So we're gonna take our salad bowl wax and we are going to make a pattern. So I want some to chip off. Everywhere where this goes will be where the paint chips off. Big, healthy, chunkery chippies. The other wax that we use is just a little bit um, stiff. It's harder to put where you want it. 
So you want to kind of look at your pattern and make sure you're not lining everything up so that is lined up. Let's go up yonder. I want to kind of cup the words with the chips. Okay, when you're done with this and we get all of our paint chipped off, you will have um, the ability to clean the wax off um, using a um, some just a zep or a degreaser. So don't be afraid of having that wax residue. Now we'll get out our next color and we're going to apply our paint thickly. We can't do it really in layers. We have to do it kind of in one pass. So we want it thick and then wherever we're stopping, we want to feather off. So just kind of flick your brush. So if I'm coming right down here in the middle, I'll flick to blend. And that's the same technique as our antiquing technique. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm going to lean my brush. And I'm going to kind of smear the paint on. And if I miss some things like that, that's perfect, honestly. So this little guy over here is exactly what we would want. If I could just fake that the whole time I'm painting, that would be perfect. And we're gonna sand to chip the paint. And we're gonna sand to make this more even looking. Turn my board over so that I'm going in the right direction with my brush. So see how my set down is right there. I need to be able to feather that up. Okay, and now we dry. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is find a credit card, a scrubby, something with a straight edge on it, and just see what will scrape away. The more natural, organic looking, the better it will look. And so that's what you can't fake right there, is you can't fake an authentic pull away. And that's what the wax does for you. Okay, so now make sure your palette knife is clean. And now we sand. Okay, so lighten this up. You'll get all kinds of stuff sticking to the bottom of your sanding block. And you might end up with your shoes full of sanding bits.
Okay, and then I think I want to tint just a little bit. I really wish I had a lighter color brown. However, I think it'll be fine. We'll take one of our little sponges that you need to own. They're like $1.59, we decided just a couple days ago. And they are so useful. So we're gonna put a little bit of water on our brush. This is our brush. And then I wanna just go over the white just to bring it in. So that color is gonna be fine. It's so funny how dark that bottle looks and how light that color is because it's water-based stain. I'm just loading on one side of my brush and I'm leaving this side clean so I can wipe it back if I need to. This is bringing our two colors together instead of them being so contrasty. This technique would be ideal for any of that new, um, like cowboy chic kind of thing that's going on um, with the cows and the Highland, the Highland cattle and all of that look. All right, so we're gonna do just a little bit extra on the ends and on the edges, just to kind of frame the piece, just a little bit. So I just won't wipe it back as far. And then I want my middle, to be a little bit evener. Okay, and now we let it dry. Okay, so we offload our paintbrush. And because this is a big old hole, I think I'm switching my gears here. Jumbo daubers are the best for big hole letters. And I'm offloading it on my palette paper, which is a different thing that I don't usually show. When you just know that you need generous paint, but you don't want it too sloppy, just go off to the side and offload. And then once it gets kind of saturated, use the paper towel. Okay, last little bit with sanding. Light pressure. Okay, I think that'll do it. Now we just need a bow and some greenery and we are golden. I've tied a ribbon around the board and attached just a piece of greenery that we had laying around that we cobbled together from three or four different other pieces. I wrapped the stem of everything that I tied together with string so it would be more finished and I hot glued. Okay, and where my berries had chipped, I touched them up with paint. Okay, you ready? This is so country fun, I love it. I hope that you've enjoyed our time together today. Subscribe, ring the bell, make sure that you give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.